नमस्कार माता जी नमस्कार माता जी हम धरती माता को कैसे बचा सकते हैं फ्रॉम ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी ह्यूमन हैव डैमेज द एनवायरनमेंट डिस्ट्रॉय द ओशंस इन द पास्ट 500 इयर्स मोर ह्यूमंस हैव बीन किल्ड बाय अदर ह्यूमन बीइंग्स थ्रू वॉर्स देन एनी नेचुरल डिजास्टर्स लुक्स लाइक ह्यूमंस आर अ प्रॉब्लम how can we bring that shift in consciousness that the masters of india have taught us to live naturally and simply there is a progression in the unveiling of the various realms of consciousness as each new being appears on the planet so you have at the beginning the mineral world which is then followed by the plant animal world which is followed by the human world or human realm these are all parallels to the chakras in the system as well and the human being is that conceptual being that evolution has thrown up or let's say the trajectory of time has thrown up the plant animals were the emotional beings it's the first time you talk about motion at all in the history of this planet and the human beings are not the last beings that this planet is going to see or is seeing because you already have the next beings the new beings populating this planet and the difference between the human beings and these new beings these transformative beings is that while the human being is operating with reason and logic as a base station just as animals and plants operate with the emotional as the base station the new beings will operate with the transformative as their base station there is a new kind of being populating this planet which will not operate from that logical rational base and will thus be able to create change in a way that the human being cannot and also cannot imagine there is also something else that's happening on the planet and that is that the human being itself is expanding its consciousness collectively from the purely rational and logical because the human being is familiar with the emotional the human being is familiar with the rational and the logical but what the human being is not as familiar with is that entire transformative consciousness and so collectively that change is happening which means that human beings are increasingly capable of large scale change in a short time which is unusual for a rational logical inference based process so as the future becomes the present you will see changes not just with human beings but also with the appearance of the new beings so problems like the environmental crisis that we are facing will be dealt with in a way that we can't really imagine today it might take a bit of time for that to emerge but it will happen and as far as your point about human beings killing each other destroying each other over the last 500 years if one actually looks at history there are less human beings being killed currently by each other than there were in the past the history of the human race is quite a violent one and it's in fact less violent in today's day and age than it was before but while it might be physically less violent there are less lives lost it is emotionally more violent it is conceptually more violent violence is not limited to the physical and as the human beings consciousness expands this violence will also reduce in the physical and then gradually reduce in the emotional and then reduce even in the conceptual 
the wars that happen are also financial wars which emerge in the conceptual and you can you can absolutely destroy a society by financially cutting them off from the general economy so there are many ways in which these wars are fought and as time passes as the consciousness of the human being expands beyond the rational into the transformative into the unity consciousness you mentioned the ancients of this of the Indian subcontinent, one has to say that they were there all over the world. It's just that in India, in the Indian subcontinent, in Bharat, they are still alive and that entire knowledge is still very much present. It's also there in other continents, but here it is far more alive than anywhere else. The gods are alive, the elements are alive, the planets are alive, that entire teaching has been kept alive far more than in most places. So, while we have the past, we also have the present moment, which is where the human race uh, must focus. This pain and this suffering also reduces if collectively there is an expansion of consciousness and that expansion happens the more people move into the present moment and try to live more in the present tense rather than projected into the future. And that is also collectively something which is happening around the world. More and more people are understanding the meaning of presence, of being in the here and the now, of soul, of tuning into soul, of moving into more quiet and this understanding is going hand in hand with that expansion of consciousness. So the one propels the other and vice versa. So what I can say now in this context to you, Jagpal, is as a human being, your contribution to this whole thing is to reduce your consumption to the minimum, to, to consume uh, what is required, just as your ancestors, our ancestors said, clearly mentioned all over the Shastras again and again, the ancient texts, the ancient books, they talk about this all the time, to keep the desires to a minimum, to fulfill them even less. And when that happens, and when everyone does that, then things start to change, because no top-down approach will ever help, it has to be a bottom-up approach, it cannot be a religious top-down approach, it has to be a spiritual bottom-up approach. And that is why the human race is increasingly, and especially in so-called advanced societies, moving towards Self-Realization or being forced into it. So, it is a bright future, it is not a dark future by no means. Yes.